So let's talk about one of the most destructive mechanical terrors out of the new Chaos Space Marine Codex. Just how much damage can one of these Lords Discordant do? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing another Chaos Space Marine unit review. I thought today we'd focus on one of the most destructive HQs out of their entire arsenal, the thoroughly murderous Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. These guys are basically a subset of Chaos Lords that have an unholy affinity towards machines, often striding out to war at the front of a phalanx full of demon engines, and generally tend to target the enemy's own war machines, slicing them open with blades and magma cutters, and the Hellstalker then proceeding to devour their machine spirits and make itself stronger. In the new Chaos book, they are very, very strong, so today I thought we'd do a full unit review, talk over their data sheets and any obvious buffs and synergies that are going to make them better, talk through a few of the legion options that might be particularly good on a Lord Discordant, take a look over their massive damage output and talk about their use in game. Lots to go through, so let's jump straight in. So the Lord Discordant is an 175 point HQ choice for Codex Chaos Space Marines. All of the options that you can take on it cost the same. The only thing that would upgrade its points cost would be if you took an extra Chaos Mark for 15 points. It's a bit of an unusual HQ choice in that it's a rather big vehicle unit that's also a character. And it also has the Demon, Demon Engine and Legion keywords. Stat line wise it's pretty meaty. A 12 inch move and hitting on 2s. Strength 4 and toughness 6. 9 wounds, 6 attacks. Leadership 9 and a 2 plus save. In the previous version before this codex it had 12 wounds meaning that you could just shoot it directly so this now means that it can be screened behind intervening enemy units. Otherwise a 12 inch move is pretty nice for getting melee where it needs to be and 9 wounds, toughness 6 and a 2 plus save with armour of contempt really means that it isn't all that easy to take out except with high AP anti-tank guns. It also gets a 5 plus invul save and regenerating wounds thanks to being a demon engine. War gear wise the Lord Discordant is pretty loaded with different weapons. Its primary attack is with an Impaler Chain Glaive, Strength plus 2, AP 3 and Damage 2, and it gets plus 1 to wound on the charge, a profile that's going to be pretty good with dealing with standard sized Space Marines, so 6 attacks with that profile is a pretty good start. On top of that though, it also gets Bladed Limbs for 4 extra attacks with Strength 6, AP 2, Damage 2, and also some Mecha Tendrils for another 4 attacks at Strength 4 and Damage 1. It's always going to be fairly efficient at chewing through infantry with a big 14 attacks. Then you've got the choice of a couple of ranged weapons, either a Bale Flamer or an Auto Cannon, and to be honest the Bale Flamer just really is so much better. The Bale Flamer is an 18 inch gun with Assault 2d3, Strength 6, AP-2 and Damage 2 Auto Hits, and to be honest I already think that that will probably be better than the Auto Cannon just straight out, never mind the fact that you also get the Let the Galaxy Burn rule, and that gives you an extra 2 hits if you're playing pure chaos. The autocannon's 48 inch range and gets 3 shots at strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage 2. For me the extra range just really doesn't weigh out the extra damage. At the moment I'll be taking the Bale Flamer every time. Then you get the choice of two different mouth weapons. Either you get the Technovirus Injector for plus 1 damage in melee versus vehicles or the Magma Cutter which is a single shot at 6 inches and is basically a Melter Gun at strength 8, AP minus 4 and damage D6 plus 2. Most people running the Lord Discordant tend to prefer the Technovirus Injector at the moment. Vehicles are at least fairly common and this is an absolutely monumental boost against them. Going from damage 2 to damage 3 with those bladed limbs and impaler chain glaive are going to mean that you're an actual credible threat to them rather than something that they can basically just ignore. A single close range melter shot I just don't think outweighs that even if you can use that against infantry. Finally it's got a few fun special rules. You get the let the galaxy burn rule for the extra attacks with that bale flamer. Plus if you get to that wanton slaughter then exploding sixes to hit in melee aren't bad. It is a demon engine as we mentioned. And then it has a buff and debuffing rule called corrupt machine spirits where you get to go in the command phase and nominate a vehicle within 9 inches. If you chose an enemy vehicle you take a look at its wound characteristic, roll a dice for each wound that it has. And every six that you get deals a mortal wound. And if you nominate a friendly vehicle it just gets plus one to hit in melee instead. Not too bad for a Venom Crawler or a Morlafine perhaps. I feel like the damage dealing part of the rule will usually be a bit opportunistic. Because it happens in your command phase it means that the opponent gets to basically move away if they really care about this that much. But at least if you have this guy hanging around with one of your dangerous melee units or something. If the enemy charges them with something like an Imperial Knight he might be in the position to actually inflict some pretty big damage. If you targeted a 24 wound knight with this guy in theory that should be around 4 mortal wounds then and there which isn't too bad. 
Finally, if you do manage to kill a vehicle in melee at some point in the game, and you get to also use that Corrupt Machine Spirits rule twice, I feel like that's only going to be meaningful in some games, to be honest, but it's quite fun and gives you the idea of the Hellstalker feeding off the enemy vehicle. Overall, the Lord Discordant really has an all-round solid datasheet, it's pretty fast and pretty tough, can be shielded from enemy shooting, it's very dangerous against enemy infantry and potentially vehicles with the Technovirus, and for a Flamer, the Bell Flamer really is very dangerous, a pretty meaty attack with a good range. Of course though, being a character, there's a whole ton of options for being able to make him more dangerous. First up, if you want a mark for 15 points, and most of them are at least okay. The Mark of Slanesh is generally quite popular for most units in the Codex, it allows you to fight first, which is quite nice on a unit with heroic intervention, and it does allow you to be targeted by some nice prayers and powers. The Advance and Charge prayer is really nice, as is the 5 plus fill no pain power. Otherwise, Corn could give you plus 1 strength, Nurgle gives you a bit of defence against strength 6 or high strength shooting, and Zinch allows you to ignore a failed save once per turn, which really is quite nice when you don't have that many wounds to start with, and you do have quite good armour. I'd say the marks aren't mandatory, but in the right list I think the mark of Slanesh could be a really good pickup. I'd say perhaps the single strongest combo with the Lord Discordant though is the Flames of Spite Warlord trait. This one's pretty nice on just about any melee character to be honest, but combined with the Lord Discordant I think that's about as strong as you're ever going to get for it. This Warlord trait allows you to re-roll wound rolls in melee, and each 6 to wound in combat also deals a mortal wound as well. Just the re-rolling wounds would be excellent on the Discordant to be honest, it allows all of its mid-strength attacks to be pretty dangerous to things that are say toughness 7 or 8, plus the Lord Discordant is going to get a whole ton of mortal wounds just about whatever it attacks with this, it's got 14 attacks to start with, you're going to be hitting with most of them, and that's going to add up to a fair few 6s, particularly with the re-rolls. A lot of the time you should be expecting something like 2-3 to three mortal wounds on average. I think very few Warlord traits are ever going to compare with this one for this guy. I guess if you just wanted an, a bit of extra toughness or you were using Flames of Spite elsewhere, you could think about that Unholy Fortitude one for a 5 plus feel no pain. Then I think it's also a pretty decent choice for using Relics on. With some very specific war gear, it can't take much of the more generic choices, but a few of the things that can go on basically any model are really interesting. If you're Slanesh, then the Intoxicating Elixir can give you a turn of not taking any more than 3 wounds in a fight phase, guaranteeing that you live to fight back, or your opponent can't deal with you in this turn. The Mantle of Traitors is a potentially nice one, it allows you to re-roll hits, and you can get an Epic Deed stratagem for free. For example, if you were playing Emperor's Children, that could be their fight's last stratagem. The Gorget of Eternal Hatred is a really good durability one as well. Plus 1 to your saves is amazing with Armor of Contempt and a 2 plus save base, and it also gives them a 4 plus invul and mortal wounds in death. Lastly, if you just want to go all the way down the melee damage route, then I still think a Lock of the Black could be interesting for a Lord Discordant on that Impaler Chainglaive. If you're using Flames of Spite and it gets the plus 1 to wounds, then you're going to be wounding with just about every hit that you make normally. That's usually going to average somewhere between 3 and 5 extra mortal wounds each time you fight. If you just want raw murder power, then those two are pretty good. Otherwise, you could potentially have other powers in support. You could have Advance and Charge from the Slanesh Prayer from a nearby Dark Apostle if you have a cast free. That's potentially very scary indeed. The average threat range would go up to a 22 inch charge, never mind if you use some command rerolls to make the charge or advance roll higher. Otherwise, for psychic powers, the Slanesh one could give you a 5 plus fill no pain if it isn't in use elsewhere. And if you have a Master of Possession on the table, you could potentially use Warp Marks for a plus 1 to wound. You're not often going to get that already with the Impaler Chainglaive, but it could even be okay for the Bale Flamer. As well as that, you could potentially heal them with Pact of Flesh, get extra toughness or auto wounds in melee as well, though I feel often the Master of Possession is going to be better off directing their buffs elsewhere. Otherwise, I guess you could have Warp Smiths to try and pile a few more wounds back onto your creation. And in Black Legion, Abaddon could give you the full rerolls to hit and wound for a character if it made more sense. Though I guess if he can make melee himself, it's often going to be better just buffing up the despoiler rather than a Lord Discordant. Finally, for more generic choices, a lot of stratagems aren't really usable on this guy without the core keyword and being a vehicle. Perhaps one of the most relevant is a 1 command point for minus 1 damage though. That's quite nice as a reactive defensive buff if you get hit by a bunch of damage 2 weapons. Though a couple of the god specific ones are kind of okay as well. Nurgle's transhuman physiology, and Slanesh has one to shoot a falling back unit. If you tag an enemy unit and they drop back from you, that could give them a nasty Bale Flamer surprise. Otherwise, just re-rolling a charge roll seems like a pretty reasonable choice. Next, let's take a quick cycle through the legions and what they can potentially do for this Lord of Machines. 
The Black Legion trait really doesn't help out too much, seeing as he's usually going to be hitting on twos, but I guess you could get re-rolls from Abaddon. And for relics, you might also have the Cloak of Conquest competing with the other ones that he can take. Getting objective secured on a big, tough, and threatening model like this is nice. Word bearers get their reroll hit rolls, which is pretty nice. And a 5 plus save against mortal wounds isn't too bad either. With high save and toughness, it is a pretty reasonable way of taking him out. Otherwise, they can reroll wound rolls for 2 CP as he's a demon. Though, if you were thinking of using that, probably just getting Flames of Spite in the first plate might be better. And they do have that rather nice hexagrammatic ward stratagem as well, making a save go away is cool. Night Lords might not have massive synergy with him, as he's going to get the plus one to wound quite a lot from charging with the chain glaive at least. But he potentially could take that dirty fighter warlord trait for fighting last, and there's some useful stratagems for keeping the foe in melee, or allowing this model to fall back and charge. Iron Warriors maybe feels like one of the fluffiest ways to run him, as they do like their machines and demon engines. They can potentially make a very tough Lord Discordant with plus one toughness and a five plus feel no pain. He's going to be a pain to chew through. And they could also combine that with a minus one to wound stratagem if they really want him to survive. Toughness seven and minus one to wound is pretty brutal. It's kind of a shame that he couldn't take the Techno Venomous Mecha tendrils. That would be really nice. And if he just wanted to make a build that was excessively punishing to vehicles, you could maybe take that Cranium Malevolous Relic. Between that and his corrupt machine spirit, he could be dealing out a whole load of mortal wounds to nearby vehicles. Though to be fair, I think that's more of a fun choice, and it's probably not quite as strong as some of the more generic strong relic choices. I'd say for Alpha Legion, again, they don't have masses going on for this guy. Four back and charge and minus one to hit is okay though. Empress Children is maybe a bit more interesting. Ignoring modifiers is helpful enough, and sixes to wound giving more AP is good on all those attacks. They potentially have a Warlord trait for a plus 2 inch move with loathsome grace, and rerolling advances and charges means you can have an absolutely insane threat range if you get to use that prayer on him. Plus they've got a stratagem for a 6 inch heroic intervention on a character, not too bad for a big based one like this. They've also got 2 command points for fights last, and a relic called Fatal Solency, which is another way to belt out some mortal wounds as you're charging up. Red Corsairs just get to advance and charge for free, getting into melee easier is no bad thing, particularly when you can have flames of spite anyway. Creations of Bile make him faster and an extra pip of strength, and fights on death is pretty cool as well. Twisted Regeneration could be irritating as well if the opponent does put him down and then you get to stand back up with a really powerful model. And finally, World Eaters get your plus one attack, a little bit less meaningful when you've got so many to start with, and then other multiple melee buffs that you can use from stratagems. Overall, I think that the datasheet is strong enough to be usable in just about every Legion. I would say out of them that maybe Word Bearers, Emperor's Children... Maybe Red Corsairs and Creations of Bile might have some of the strongest Lords Discordant around. And I think he could work pretty well in Iron Warriors advancing alongside a whole bunch of other demon engines too. So now we've talked through all the things that you can do with him, let's take a look at his damage output. This one's just for a base Lord Discordant with Flames of Spite and the Technovirus Injector. This one's not used a Relic or any Marks or anything. Isn't using any one Legion trait either which could help out too and isn't in wanton slaughter, which could make these numbers even better. Even just at base though, these numbers are pretty ridiculous. First up, you get the chance to corrupt a vehicle if there's any in range. Often there won't be, but if there is, then all well and good. The Bale Flame will average 6 hits, which should kill around 5 guardsmen, 2 space marines, or something like 2-3 to three wounds on a toughness 7-8 to eight vehicle on average. The melee damage really is where it's at though. You get 6 attacks at AP3 damage 2 with plus 1 to wound, 4 attacks at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2, and then a 4 extra anti-infantry attacks. All of these reroll wounds, 6s do mortals, and get plus 1 damage against vehicles. Just looking at a few typical targets, can absolutely obliterate hordes with something like 14 dead guardsmen on average. The mortal wounds help compensate for any attacks that fail to convert. It's pretty amazing against 2 wound infantry with all those damage 2 attacks, 6 or 7 dead space marines on average. And then the Technovirus Injector and Rerolling Wounds keeps him very efficient against vehicles as well. It's an average of 18 wounds to a Toughness 7 vehicle with a 3 plus save, or around 11 wounds to a hard target, a Toughness 8 vehicle with a 3 plus save, 5 plus invul, and minus 1 damage. There's not that many characters at this kind of points cost that can have a decent chance of one-shotting something like a Plague Burst Crawler in a single round of combat. So overall, with those kind of numbers, fairly fast movement, and fairly sturdy defence, he does seem like a very strong HQ indeed. I'd say as the HQ slots, perhaps his biggest rival is the Demon Prince. They kind of have a similar role in a big melee bruiser that's a good place for relics and warlord traits. The Demon Princes do have some decent advantages as well. Wings for some more flexible movement, a flat 3 damage and psychic powers. 
and they can do very nicely with some of the different buffs out there, say for example that Golex Demon Weapon of Nurgle. I think you could justify either one or both, it depends on how much of your HQ slots you want to dedicate to melee bruisers as opposed to buffing characters. In general for competitive lists, people seem to usually be fielding just one, not multiple Lord Discordants, and they do often seem to take that Flames of Spite Warlord trait, as it is ridiculously good on them. Otherwise, I don't really think that you need support besides screening units, but maybe Advance and Charge could be handy from a Slanesh Dark Apostle if you do happen to have one around. In-game, I'd want to have him screened for the start of the game, maybe behind a big Terminator squad with that Black Rune that's insanely survivable, or maybe some Demon Engines like Venom Crawlers or Morlophines at a good buff with his plus one to hit. Even with a good movement, you might have to think about terrain a fair bit, he isn't going to be able to move through ruin walls and things, and that could sometimes make it a little bit hard for him to charge certain enemies. With a big base, you might have to think about which movement lane is going to be going down. I really do like the Bale Flamer as a decent shooting attack that you can fire with a fairly okay range that the enemy can't really do much about when you're screened, and it's pretty nice that you can fire that even if you advance each turn, so potentially up to an 18-inch move and then an 18-inch Bale Flamer threat, so it could allow you to barbecue something quite far away if you need to. Then, when the enemy does get in charge range, hopefully being screened should allow him to get the jump on them rather than the other way around. He really is quite general purpose, as you often might not get the choice of what you're going to charge with a big base like that, but if he has the option of going into two wound infantry or big vehicles, then that's usually going to be a big win. I'd say maybe the things he's most likely to bounce against are things like big buff squads of terminators with three wounds and armour of contempt boosts. If you're going into those sort of things, he probably needs support from another unit. Still though, for 175 points, he seems like a really good piece. I wouldn't be too surprised to see him in multiple Chaos lists going forward. So I think that just about wraps it up for this unit review. Let me know what you think of this guy down in the comments below, and any experience you might have had with him on the table, either in your own forces, or seeing him on the other side of the tabletop. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. I'm sure we'll have plenty more for the chaos over the next few weeks. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description if you have been enjoying quite a bit. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.